Hi, welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about provisioning scripts. Now, a provisioning script is a script that you can run when you provision a virtual machine in the IBM Cloud. And these can be useful to further set up your virtual machine as it provisions. So, for example, it's a way to run jobs at provisioning time. So, you, so this can be things like yum update or yum install um, at a particular service. So uh, let's assume that you're creating a, uh, a bunch of uh, web servers. So what you can do is create the virtual machine. You can run a provisioning script when that machine is provisioned. It will do all the yum updates. It will then install HTTPD. It may also install um, the first few HTML scripts, for example. And uh, so that by the time the machine is actually up and provisioned, uh, that's all done for you. And you don't then need to go into each individual machine and separately do the yum updates or install HTTPD. So how do we get a provisioning script onto the server and how do we run it? Well, basically what we have to do is create a, a, a script and uh, we then have to place that on somewhere which can then serve that script via either HTTP or HTTPS. And what we then do is when we're actually provisioning the server is that we name the script uh, within the provisioning screens. So it may be something like HTTPD or HTTP uh, myscriptserver.com slash yumscript.sh or perhaps something like https uh, 169.62.xxxx yumscript.sh So what's the difference between doing it with HTTP and HTTPS? Well, if you run it with HTTP, uh, the script will be led for an administrator to run so it won't run automatically whereas if you use HTTPS, because HTTPS is a bit more trusted uh, the script will actually run automatically on the server Right, so let's head over to the IBM Cloud and I'll show you this in action. Here I am in my IBM Cloud account. Um, I've already created a, a provisioning script server. Um, so all I've done there is created um, effectively a web server. Um, and it's it's going to be this web server that actually provides the, um, the scripts that um, I, I can then provision against. So as I say, all I've done is created a web server. Um, so, what, so when I've created that web server, I've ended up with a directory structure which is var www um, slash html and then within there um, you can see that I've now got two files so I've created one called index.html and I've created another one uh, called yum update.sh it's the yum update.sh which actually is my provisioning script and um, what I can do is I can create as many provisioning scripts as I like in here for, for, for different tasks um, um, but this, this is just a very basic one to, to basically give you an idea of, of how these things work. So if I show you what's in that file, so if I do a by uh, yumupdate.sh, uh, you can basically see I've got two lines in there, uh, and I want both of these commands executed when I create a new server. So the first one is yumupdate minus y, um, so what that does is it goes through and it updates all of the packages that are installed, so, so make sure that my, uh, my server is nice and up to date. And the second one is yum install HTTP D minus Y, and what that actually does is, is install the HTTP D server. So with this script, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my um, server is up to date with all the packet, latest package versions, and um, I'm then installing the HTTP D server. So let's go and see how that actually works. Right, so I'm back in the dashboard of my IBM Cloud account. Now there are actually two ways that I can instruct the, uh, the, the, the virtual machine to run um, the the, the provisioning script. So the first one I'll, I'll show you, it's a bit quick and dirty. So what I can then do is it, it's actually on the provisioning screen itself is where you um, where you uh, tell it in either case which script to run. But um, on this particular page what you can do, um, let's just let this page load up. So you either put in the name of the URL here, so, um, so I can just basically can paste that in. So you can see that it's the um, basically this is the the IP address of that um, of that server that I've created, and that's the name of the script. So that's what it will go and run. The other thing that I can do is actually put um, tell the tell my account that I have a provisioning script. So let's go and set that up. So if I go into uh, so I go to classic infrastructure from this menu, and then go to devices and manage. If I then go to provisioning scripts, um, as you can see, there are no provisioning scripts in there all, all, all at the moment. So if I had a provisioning script, 
um, then I can so give it a name. So my um, yeah, um, update. Well, let's call let's call it my web server, my web server script, because that's what it's doing. It's effectively doing uh, you know it's create, installing a web server. So I might want to run this script against any server that I create as a web server. Um, I'm going to uh, put in my URL, so I'm paste that in, and um, and then I just um, then I just give it a click add. And there we go. So I've got a meaningful name, and uh, that's now in there. So let's go and actually provision a server. So if I go to device, um, well, let's go to let's go to the catalog, shall we? Um, so go to catalog, virtual server. Um, let's uh, let's create a public server. So continue with that. Um, let's uh, let's give this a name. So let's call this my web. Server one, and uh, let's, uh, let's pick somewhere to, to create the server. So let's, go, let's, let's create this in London, um, because again, that's nice and close to me. I'm going to leave everything else pretty much as a default. Um, I need to click Add-ons, and this is where I can then actually um, provision my script. Now it's actually not not actually giving me the provisioning name there. So what I may need to do is actually just refresh my refresh my screen. Like that again. So there we go, my provisioning scripts there now. So put in my web server script and it just then reminds me of where that is. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. So um, so I just want a bog standard server. I'm going to click um, that I've read uh, all the terms and conditions as always, and if I click create. So that'll take a little while to uh, to, to provision. Um, now obviously what I'm expecting um, when I actually then log into this server for the first time. What I'll actually see is that if I try and manually run yum update minus y, it will tell me that there's nothing to update. And uh, and when I try and install the HTTPD server, um, it'll also tell me that well it's it's already installed and there's nothing to update. And and obviously you'll be able to see the uh, the directory structure there as well. So I'm going to leave that for uh, just a couple of minutes. So I'll pause the video at this point and uh, I'll come back once we're once we're back up and running. Right, my server's now provisioned, so um, so let's go and log into it. Um, here we go, let's put in the, uh, the, the, uh, the IP address and the password. So um, so I'm logged in as root. So the first thing you'll notice if I just do a listing of the uh, the slash root directory, um, you'll notice this, uh, this script here, this post install script. And if I go and have a look at that, um, you'll notice that it's exactly the same as the script um, that was on my um, provisioning script server. So what's happened is, um, as part of the provisioning process, um, the server's actually gone and downloaded um, this script and it's placed it into the slash root directory and then basically it's executed it. So um, just to prove to you that it's been executed, so if I try and do a yum um, update uh, minus y, what should happen is it will come back and say, Yep, there we go. No packet, no packages marked for updates. We've done the update, and um, if I uh, if I do similarly, so if I do a yum um, install httpd, and um, then it should say it's already installed, which it does. So uh, so so uh, so brilliant. Yes, it's actually installed that. And just to show that again, so if I go to um, var www, I should see a. Uh, HTML and a CGI bin directory. So there we go. So a quick recap then of what we've done. Um, so I've created a, uh, a provisioning server or a, a provisioning script server, I should say, which is effectively a web server. Um, what I've then done is created the script um, on the uh, on the provisioning server, and then when I've actually come to provision a new virtual machine, um, I've then used that script to do yum updates. And um, also to uh, to actually install my HTTPD server. So it's dead easy. Um, I guess that the uh, the hardest bit is actually creating the um, the provisioning script server in the first place. But once you've done that and you've got your scripts, it's dead easy. And uh, it then just means that you can create lots of different servers um, and and run standard scripts against them. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.